and hello everyone uh welcome back to the deck and thank you very much for tuning in to all of you um i'm here today with two very special guests and we have a lot of things to talk about and we can't wait to get into details but before i do that let me introduce my first guest today nevin how are you doing i'm good yourself yeah very good thank you very much so nevin for those who maybe don't know you can you explain a little bit uh yourself or what you do at on screen bones yeah, sure. Well, very nice to meet everyone. I'm the senior producer on Skull and Bones in the Ubisoft structure. The senior producer is head of the development team, and uh, I work with, obviously, uh, the entire group to ensure that the products get out on time and uh, with the feature set that we have in mind. All right, amazing. So I'm sure you have a lot of uh, interesting information to share with us in just a minute. Uh, but before we do that, I'd like to introduce my second guest today. Uh, Mac, how are you doing today? Hi everyone. Uh, I'm doing good. What about yourself again? Yeah, very good. Um, so thank you as well for being on the show, both mm -hmm. of you, uh, Mac and, and Nevin. Mac, do you want to explain a little bit what your role on Skull and Bones is? Uh, hi everyone. Uh, I'm the game director on Skull and Bones. Uh, I'm pretty much um, working on the game roadmap uh, for launch. And also like now that we are live, working with the team to actually um, develop additions and enhancements to the game. Uh, while listening to community feedback and you know fixing things along the way as well yeah yeah so I, I guess it's fair to say that uh, you and I we talk quite often and quite a lot about a lot of things absolutely all right awesome um, so yeah once again thank you both of you for being here um, do you want to talk a little bit about what we're going to play today what you intend to do I don't know if Mike or Nevin you I think one of you is going to lead the way so maybe you want to talk a bit about what we're going to show from the game um, I mean, first off, I'm just going to one of my manufactories in Endgame to just collect uh, my pieces of eight. Uh, I think there has been quite a bit of um, issues with the collection and the rooks and everything. And I think, you know, that's one of the things I guess we want to uh, talk about, right, with the community. Yeah. yeah. No, absolutely. It's, uh, it's definitely a hot topic from the community, the, the whole collection process for pieces of eight uh, and the Endgame in general. So we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, Nevin, what about you? Where are you right now? What are you doing? What ship are you playing, actually? I'm just riding in Max Wake, trying to look uh, good. <laughs> so I'm gonna just let him take me on this ride, and uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully we get into some good mischief. All right, awesome. Um, so, which manufactory do you own, and how far are you from it? Um, let's see. Well, you can see You're kind of close where we are, actually. Uh, it's one of the ports. All right, so before we uh, get into the, the questions from the community and try to get more information, maybe for those who don't know uh, Skull and Bones that well, or maybe who haven't reached the end game, do you want to explain a little bit what's the process of the pieces of eight collection, the manufactories, uh, as briefly as you can? Um, in terms of like... Uh, Progression, I would say uh, for players who have not played Skull and Bones, uh, I would say that uh, when you hit about like Infamy 6, right, uh, it's halfway through the progression to your journey to get to Kingpin. Um, you know, you start to get introduced to, to, to the helm, right, the organization that actually um, is running a lot of its stuff with this premium currency. Um, you see that like bu building your pirate empire is not just about. Uh, sinking ships right it's about building a business and then when you get to the end game it's really starting to run your own smuggling empire like once you hit kingpin so uh, there is a bit of progression that is actually put in the game uh, you know you start by delivering orders and stuff at infamy 6 and once you hit kingpin you start to run your own empire and um, you get many factories around the world uh, to actually you know uh, do the job for you all right awesome um, so on this note, I'm going to jump right into the first question of today. Uh, so for people who are watching the stream or in the chat, uh, we've been collecting questions throughout the last uh, 10 days really. So that's why we picked up questions from community. But if you have questions that you want us to answer, uh, please don't hesitate asking them on the chat. Uh, we're keeping an eye on the chat, so we'll do our best to, to, to answer any questions you have. Um, and I saw a few comments already. Some people I, uh, have uh, noticed that you have a pretty insane amount of pieces of eight. So just for full disclosure, these are not the real uh, accounts that we play uh, on, on a personal time. These are test accounts that we're using for the purpose of the stream. So that's why you might see some crazy numbers on silver and piece of eight. It's just for us to kind of show you a little bit of the game while we focus more on answering your questions uh, than anything else. 
I mean, I will add, we're not professional streamers, so <laughs> doing this, talking to you guys, reading chat, I know you guys want uh, want answers. I can see that, uh, so we'll get to that. Yeah. So on the topic of piece of eight, uh, it's a very hot topic for the community right now. So mm -hmm. the game has been out for about four or five weeks now. Season two has been out for two weeks. A lot of our players are actually very highly engaged in the in-game loop, collecting piece of eight, uh, upgrading many factories. And the big question is, what happens with Season 2? Um, so I think, Nevin, you can talk a little bit more about this, uh, about our plans for Season 2 and, and what's going to happen. Yeah, I mean, obviously, look, we're two weeks into Season 1, guys, and everybody's been asking this question, what's happening at the end? And, you know, we do have a marketing plan to talk about Season 2 coming up. Um, and clearly, there's some behavior that people are noticing that is not uh, ideal. And the goal for us with Endgame and obviously um, the game in general is to create a fair uh, place for people to play uh, so that you get rewarded for the investment uh, that you've put in. Um, so we do have a plan. We have things that we're going to be rolling out as part of our uh, rollout for what's going on in season two. Um, so be patient with us. Uh, we'll communicate that as part of our, our natural cadence. Yeah. And I, I just want to add to this that um, we, I mean, myself plus the community team, we are very actively monitoring the situation, right? We are looking at Reddit, we're looking at Discord, we know what's going on, we're aware of the discussions. Um, so even though we're not ready to tell you everything yet, because there's a lot of cool things coming, uh, we know what's going on. So yeah, give us a, a bit more time and we'll get back to you on uh, all the cool stuff that's coming with Season 2. Um, next question, uh, and that's more something that I can ask Mac, I think. Uh, and it's actually going back a bit of time. Um, so the whole process of collecting piece of eight, we've done some changes recently with recent updates, uh, making the, the process a little bit uh, faster for players, especially those who don't want to spend too much time fighting against rogue and just want to collect pieces of eight as fast as possible. Um, do you want to talk a bit about uh, what's coming next for piece of eight collection with uh, the next update with season two? Well, um, next in line is actually what we call the first pass of flood management, right? Um, the ideal behind, you know, running your own smuggling empire um, was never the intention that you are uh, always the one doing all the hard work. Um, so you will then be able to assign ships to POIs, right? Uh, essentially your manufacturers to actually do the collection for you. So um, that's coming up in uh, season two. Cool. Yeah. And I, I see a question from the chat actually, which is something I also wanted to bring up. Um, I didn't. I forgot to kind of mention it, but next week we have a, a, a next update coming, 1.3. Uh, it's going to be an interesting update in the sense that it answers a lot of the feedback that we received from the community since the launch. One of which is actually on uh, the collection of pieces of eight, right? Um, so we are basically uh, making it a little bit easier for people at the beginning. Uh, I think I don't know, Mike, if you feel comfortable talking a bit about this, uh, the increase of uh, storage space. I think and. Um, definitely, I mean, these are the things that uh, we recognize through some of the player patterns, right, of our community. And um, we realized that, like, a really short, um, you know, timing uh, before the pieces of it, like, you know, just fills up your coffers very quickly and players have this uh, pressure to actually collect it. Uh, that's not the real intent. So, you know, increment to the storage size, making fun time a bit longer. Uh, you know, this will actually uh, lessen a bit of the pressure in terms of the collection. Uh, and this is, you know, the first 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 round of fixes mm -hmm. that we are doing, right, to ensure that uh, the players can enjoy the game more uh, out of the end game loop, I would say. Yeah, yeah. and um, Nevin, feel free to jump in if you want, but I, I, I just want to say as well that Season 1 for us was like the first step of on game, which is essentially building your own empire, right? Uh, we have a long-term plan for how to make evol uh, make that future evolve, that part of the game evolve, where you can continue to build the empire. So fleet management is the first step, uh, but there are obviously a lot of cool and exciting things coming with uh, follow-up seasons and following patches, right? Yeah, and I think, look, at the end of the day, when we think about Skull and Bones as a product, it's a live game, and we are going to be releasing content every season. We're going to be releasing... Uh, fixes for the community, the quality of life fixes are a big part of our process and our roadmap. So it's important for us to make sure that we're focused in terms of the content we're delivering. And I know I can read in the chat and on Reddit and on the forums, like clearly people want everything right away. Um, but, you know, we keep using this term, we're going on this journey with the community. 
And when we see how the gameplay is evolving and how people are consuming the game, it really helps us craft uh, the future experiences, right? And so releasing everything all at once um, puts us in a position where we're trying to fix everything all at once. And part of that focus, I think, is helping the game evolve um, with how the community's uh, playing it. Yeah, um, I can I can say for me that it's a uh, it's a tough position to be in sometimes because I I see what the players are asking for on the forums on Reddit. Um, sometimes I can tease a little bit saying yeah we're working on this, but there's a lot of cool things that are coming in future updates that I can't wait to talk about and share with the community because most of it addresses some of that feedback. Uh, some of it I think is going to be surprised as well on how the game is going to evolve. Um, a big discussion as well, and especially since the last update, since we increased the uh, level of ship ranks, uh, and maybe that's something you can answer, Mac. Um, players are wondering what's the next step for ship. Uh, are they going to be able to upgrade their ships? Is the ship rank going to be changed? Like, can you tell us a bit more about this? Um, absolutely. So um, we do realize that there there are issues with the gear score system, right? Uh, and you know, um, the team in an upco um, upcoming update, right? Uh, the team has already worked on a fix. Right to ensure that players can actually have you know play with variety of weapons. Right, it's not just about uh, having one epic weapon and that's the only uh, meta for that season. So uh, the team is pushing a update right soon uh, in terms of gear score balances. But uh, what's coming up next in season two will be what we call the ship upgrades. This is where we actually bring all the small ships, medium ships up on par with each other, and players start to also have the freedom to actually pick. You know the ships they want to play with. Do they want to play with small ships uh, that maybe accelerate faster, or do you want to play with medium ships that have higher trim speed, uh, but you know lower maneuverability and stuff like that? So uh, you know that was always the aim of the game. So yeah. So what this means that if if for example I like the cutter more than any other ship because mm -hmm. I like the way it looks or or whatever reason, I'll be able to upgrade that ship and use the cutter for any end game activity, any boss fight. Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, you gain perks along the way uh, as you upgrade your ships as well, uh, in terms of stats as well, right? So based on the archetype itself, some some of them actually increase more in terms of max hull health. Some increase more in terms of acceleration and stuff like that. So. Okay, then it's gonna be a the obvious follow up question. I don't know who wants to take that one. Maybe Nevin. Mm -hmm. What about large ships? <laughs> yeah, I mean <laughs> the chat is blowing up with the uh, requests. Um, so large ships were always part of the plan, right? And large ships are coming. Uh, when are they coming? When they're ready? Uh, I know that that was referenced in the last stream, but uh, of course we want to uh, introduce large ships to the game and we want to play with large ships and they're part of our uh, prototyping and our development and we have large ships that we're working on. Um, as I talked about, right, being a live game and rolling out this content and ensuring that we're evolving with the community, uh, that's the focus. And part of, I think, uh, ensuring that we're releasing content for the community at realistic intervals means focusing on what we have and what's working well, um, and then creating a system that we can build off of. So we can already see how people are interacting with Endgame, with uh, combat, getting those systems tight, and then working towards introducing large ships in a way that is complementary to how the community is playing is the goal. Yeah, I think it's fair to say that um, the team is working really hard actually on every ship they bring to the game to make sure that there's a there's a specific purpose to each ship, right? Like that not two ships are too similar. Um, there's a couple of interesting questions actually from the chat before we move on to the next topic. Mm -hmm. The first one is somebody, and that's something we didn't mention, but uh, obviously when we talk about ship upgrades, uh, and maybe Mike, correct me if I'm wrong, but upgrades are applicable to almost every ship except the doll. Yes. yes. I didn't want to pronounce it because I always pronounce it wrong. <laughs> but yes, uh, so the doll will remain a, a hunter-gatherer ship, right? Uh, yes, but you know, uh, to be fair, I think hunting sea monsters and, and you know, uh, other, uh, I would call enemies in Skull and Bones will, I think uh, there will be also further upgrades that come to the doll in the future. So, yeah. Mac, where are we going? Take um, me on we're a just trip. Sail <laughs> sailing around and just bullying people. Just I mean, admiring the landscape. <laughs> you want me to just pick a spot? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Of course. Going for it. I'm trying to bring us across the air. Are we go where are we going? No, just go around the golf. You, okay. you can pick a spot and All right. just go there. 
Africa. Here we go. Um, so since you're doing a fair bit of sailing, uh, a related question. A lot of people are so like uh, asking about uh, an over-the-shoulder camera uh, perspective. Can you tell us if that's something we're looking into or that we want to look into? Uh, yeah, well, I can oh, probably oh. take this. Okay. Um, yeah, so absolutely. I mean, look, the game uh, in development involved uh, at many points, right? And there was various camera uh, perspectives. You know, clearly we have our first person view, very immersive. Uh, we moved to add this third person view over the shoulder, obviously, is something that uh, has been uh, in development part of our uh, plans. Um, ultimately, these decisions and how things get rolled out at launch come down to performance come down to how it's complementing the gameplay systems. Um, so definitely a possibility, definitely something we're, look at, uh, we're looking at, sorry. Um, but obviously it has to make sense, right? It has to make sense with how the game is running and making sure that we're continuing to uh, deliver the highest quality possible. Yeah, and I, I just want to add to this that um, I know firsthand that there's a lot of different opinions on the matter, right? I, I know uh, some people from the community who are really into the first person view because it's immersive, it makes you feel like you're really on the ship uh, looking at all the cliffs and the mountains from the world. I personally play as a way that I like to see the perspective of my ship, I like to be uh, able to see how my ship looks and play it more in a strategic way so I can really see my surroundings. So I understand why some people might want to have like a middle ground between those two where on one hand, you can see your ship, but you can also see your captain, and you still have a good uh, range of view, basically. Yep. Um, I want to take some time. There's something that uh, I think we want to talk about at the beginning. There's a few questions about people who are also having issues with uh, some contracts, some quests in the game. Uh, and I know that there's something the team has been looking at and working on really hard since the launch of the game, trying to make sure we address all the blockers, all the issues that people have in the game. Mm -hmm. Evan, is that something you want to talk about? Uh, how, how can the community help us uh, identify those issues faster and, and get them fixed faster? Yeah, I mean, well, that's a great point, right? I think any live service game is successful based on how quickly they're able to react to community feedback and issues in the game. Um, you know, we have a very robust process here at Ubisoft where we're able to uh, pull in live data and it goes directly to the development team. I think, Alexi, you probably have a... Uh, a link that you can post it's a bug reporter mm -hmm. link that um, we look at every day right so top issues get upvoted they get put into our system they're triaged um, and you guys that are watching this uh, obviously you know you're the most engaged uh, people in the community we need your help right of course we want to fix uh, every issue and people that are having problems we need things like sorry Mac I just shot at you avoid that no, that's right. <laughs> um, nobody's so because uh, I'm showing need, the bug uh, reporter it's all fine uh, we need uh, we need the help with repro steps. We need uh, figuring out like where are these issues coming from. Of course, we're tracking all of them down as quickly as possible. Um, but this is a tool that we use in our arsenal, and it's um, the entire company is working towards uh, finding these steps and um, getting them into the development uh, team so that we can figure out how to roll out fixes as quickly as possible. Yeah, so I think it's very important. Like, obviously, we spend a lot of time reading forums, reading Reddit, reading Discord, and we try to, you know, identify all the issues, all the feedback, and prioritize to pass it on. Uh, but like Nevin said, uh, don't hesitate to go on Bug Reporter. That's really the fastest way for us to identify the big issues from the community and try to escalate them and get them fixed as soon as possible. So if you have any issue with the game, go to Bug Reporter, basically. Um, which brings me to a, a good question. Uh, uh, so a lot of the committee has been asking when are we going to bring the chat back to the game you want to talk about this nevin yeah absolutely i mean look at the end of the day um chat was something that we were working on through all of our insider programs we had multiple releases prior to launch um and the reality is it was resulting in a lot of uh crashes for the product right so chat is something that is uh you know wasn't acceptable to release in the state that it was and we're looking to fix that uh, as soon as possible. We believe we've identified the major issues and we're hoping to roll that out uh, as soon as possible, potentially next week, uh, barring some last minute checks, but that's the goal for us, right? We hear you, we know that that's a big issue for the game and we wanna fix it, but not at the expense of the quality of the gameplay experience. So in transparency, yeah, it was causing issues and we made the decision to turn it off so that we're not chasing uh, 
fresh issues that uh, um, you know are are very clearly reproducible. All right. So hopefully, fingers crossed. Next update next week. Again, 1.3 should be coming next week. Uh, there'll be a lot of quality of life changes that I think a lot of you are have been waiting for you for a couple of, uh, waiting for for a couple of weeks. Uh, so you can look forward to this. We'll share the details partners on the website, uh, and of course, all your feedback will be very important for us to then plan what are the things we should address for the next update. Um, another hot topic from the community uh, is in regards to UI, UX in general, but more specifically on the pop-up notifications. Is that something we're looking into? Is that something we have a plan to address? Uh, definitely, I can take that. Um, so in an upcoming update, uh, we will um, actually not show the notifications first when you're actually managing your, your ship, your cargo, um, you know, or using your journal. Um, but I don't think that fixes the, the root of the problem. So, um, you know, in future updates, we are, we are actually working very closely with the UI UX team to actually find a new place to house those notifications. Um, and yeah, those will be the things that will be coming up. So yeah, so uh, just to, to emphasize on this, we know it's a, a source, of a source of frustration for a lot of people. Um, so the first step for us is really to try to minimize that frustration as much as possible while we try to work on a more long-term solution to make it, uh, yeah, like functional uh, without disturbing anybody's like uh, experience, right? Yep. Um, all right. Moving on to another. Well, big topic. I want to I want to address some of this. You know, I'm looking in the chat. There's a lot of. Uh, Oh, it's so easy. Move it to the side. Move it to the bottom mm -hmm. of the screen. Yeah, absolutely. Like, of course, those are uh, those are options, right? Um, the UI, I think, in any game, any game that is uh, in development, UI is a challenge. Uh, it's baked into a lot of systems. It's baked into a lot of the um, uh, you know core uh, core systems of the game. And uh, you touch one thing, it affects many, many other things. So uh, obviously, look at the end of the day, it's clear that it's not working in a in an ideal manner and we're working to fix it and it has impact then on the ui team producing other features other things that we want to roll out to you guys uh, as well and so part of the job is really understanding the relationship between quality of life fixes addressing certain issues against uh creating new content right and that's that's really the goal and i think in a live game that's uh um uh, that's really the challenge that we have is uh, making sure that we're um, we're moving ahead on both fronts. Yeah, absolutely. And and so I can reassure everybody in the chat that it's not something that we're just ignoring. It's something that I bring up to Nevin to Mac on a daily basis. So they're very aware of how much the community talks about the these issues and how much it's important for us to do something. So that's why we're always looking at what's the quickest fix we can do to mitigate the situation. And then what's the ideal solution, which in some cases might be very fast, and in some cases might take a bit more time. Um, what's happening in the game? Why are you now? Are you on oh, your I don't way know. To we went something? to Africa. Now I'm waiting for <laughs> Mac to take me on a journey. Oh, yeah. I, I thought, thought the plan was to away. cross the open seas and <laughs> see some crazy storms. And Yeah, I wanted to bring him to the Southern Gulf. Uh, oh, yeah? Or to Ninga, but... Um, Africa is beautiful. We can check it well, out. Well, I mean, as well. we can go to the Southern Gulf. I'm just putting stuff. Uh, we can go into the reverse as well. I mean, while we are sailing, I think we can also touch on the topic of wind, right? I caught sight of it in the yeah, chat absolutely. earlier. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah, we're definitely making improvements to the how the wind direction changes. Um, so it's not going to change as often. Um, it's going to be persistent in a direction for a longer period of time. Um, it will not be as erratic, like uh, changing by a lot. Uh, we reduce the angle at which it turns over time. And, um, you know, even the change of the wind direction is going to be much more gradual than it is now. So um, hopefully it eases a bit of the pain uh, that uh, some of our pirate community, uh, you know, encounters. Yeah, so. Yes, I, I think the wind is, uh, is also a good example of some of the things that we feel is important for the game because it's i mean a big part of the game is about sailing from uh exploring the world and also the role that the wind plays in combat right if you're chasing somebody you need to be skilled to take advantage of the wind understand how the wind works if you want to catch up on your opponent right um 
and I've read a lot of different opinions on the win. Some people say, yeah, it's frustrating. I feel like the win is always against me. Uh, some people even feel like it's done on purpose to slow us down. Uh, and some others feel like, no, on the contrary, if you understand how the win works, uh, it becomes a skill and then you can, you know, take the advantage of your opponent. Yeah. Um, so I feel it's a good example of something that we can kind of look at the feedback, look at the data, tweak a little bit, see the reaction and either revert or go further, right? Absolutely. So yes, we in short, we're definitely doing something about the wind uh, and we'll continue to address it based on feedback uh, and data. And then I do see another comment on the chat about press items, right? So, you know. Do you want to talk about this? Do you want me to ask the question? Yeah, oh. so <laughs> I think the question is, um, yeah. and I've experienced it first and as well, like sometimes you complete a contract and you have a quest item for the contract, um, but once you, temp you finish the contract, you still have the item and you can't, get rid of it basically so it takes space yeah. and with the fact that you have limited space in your warehouse and inventory people are wondering like is there any way that in the future they'll be able to get rid of uh those items yes so i can just share the team is working on it we just want to make sure that it does not uh, cause our contract items to have <laughs> issues sorry I no i'm reading chat and uh, <laughs> driving i mean clearly uh pro yeah. streamers over here yeah <laughs> it's either that or you didn't like your answer i don't know <laughs> All right, yeah. Matt, set a marker. Let's go somewhere. Okay. Hang on. The chat is going very fast, but I'm trying to follow up as well. No, I love it. Uh, clans, guilds, yeah, obviously talking about it. Uh, more info soon. But yeah, I mean, clearly in a game like this, like you want to be able to create clans and guilds and uh, part of the discussion for the roadmap. Oh, uh, a question uh, that I like. Um... Any plans on improving improving ask for help feature? Um, definitely. I think um, I can take this. So um, right now, I think call for help actually uh, it's not propagated enough to the rest of the um, you know world uh, within the server itself. So uh, we're definitely going to do the first step, like ensuring that it actually stays on the map longer. Um, ensuring that you know um, it's actually populated to the whole server and everyone actually gets to see the call for help and hopefully this is the quickest first step we can do to actually improve on that uh, and we'll take it up further like uh, about you know uh, looking for a group I know we have some issues with looking for a group as well for uh, our players who actually want to find a group so I think these are two key features that the team is actually also uh, working on to find a good resolution out of it. Cool, very yeah. clear. Um, so Nevin, I'm gonna ask you again. I feel like there's a lot of people who maybe were not with us at the beginning of the stream and I still see a lot of questions about what's gonna happen with season two and the leaderboards. Do you wanna repeat what we said at the beginning? Yeah, that's a fair and I'm, I'm reading that too. I mean, clearly um, it's the hot topic. So uh, guys, we have a plan. We're in week two of our uh, season one. We're going to roll out comms on that as part of our normal marketing cadence. Uh, clearly there's some behavior that people have noticed that's uh, less than ideal and we want to work to create a, a fair space that obviously remembers the investment that you've put into uh, to the game. So more info is coming. We hear you. We see you. We know that this is a hot topic. People are wondering uh, what's coming and it's part of our uh, rollout uh, that we'll be communicating to the community very soon Yeah, I'm, I'm very excited about uh, season two actually. I know it's still far away and there's still a lot of things to do in season one um, I don't know actually how much people are aware of the fact that uh, season one is not just a, a one up one time update And then you see everything on, on the first week, right? And and maybe Mike that's something you can talk about a bit more how there's like different activities happening every week and what's waiting for players at the end of season one? Um definitely I think right now in our seasonal plan, right? Uh we do have plans for um, you know, new activities, some coming in every two weeks, right? The world events actually change and they evolve. Like for example, in season one, La Paz is actually in Africa and it moves on to Madagascar, and you know you see merchant convoys actually switch paths, uh, you know, and elite warships actually come to the defense of their own factions and stuff like that, right? On top of that, actually, there will be other fun bosses that will actually uh, appear um, in the season itself, you know. So um, we plan stuff that overlap each other in terms of like every week, every two weeks. Uh, and 
you know, there will be bounties up as well. Uh, to direct the players better to all this content. Um, you know, Blackwood, the character for our Smuggler Pass itself, uh, himself actually has a lot of all those daily contracts that actually kind of lead you to where the content changes are for the season. Um, again, this is the first take of season one, right? In season two, uh, definitely, I think, uh, in terms of like narration and in terms of like contracts to let people better understand what is happening, uh, those are the things the team is actually working very hard on to actually try to improve upon. Because we we heard you, right? So yeah, I'm I'm particularly excited by uh, my best last stand at the end of season one and see mm -hmm. how people react to it. And I'm pretty sure the community will surprise us once again and defeating it way faster than we would have imagined. Uh, but that's been a recurring thing with the insiders in the past and now with the community, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, where are you sailing towards now? I am actually sailing us over to this place. It's an outpost at the Western Basin. Can you pronounce that name? What's your French? Oh no, my French <laughs> is not good. Le, Le Maître? I something. think Nevin's French is quite good. Okay. <laughs> Where? Let's <laughs> take a bit. All right. Uh, next question. Uh, and that's something I'm really invested in because uh, that's one of my best part on Scone and Bones is uh, on the subject of PvP. So there's mm -hmm. a couple of questions, right? Uh, the first question is, are we planning to add more PvP but also PvE co-op and solo uh, activities in the future? Uh, yes, that had always been a plan. Every single season, uh, we try our best to actually bring in um, activities that is, um, you know, uh, for players who like to play PvE and PvP. So, you know, in an upcoming update, right, we're going to have uh, what we call a PvP opt-in system, right, where you can actually have PvP anywhere. So, yeah. Great. And... Lucky for me, somebody asked the exact question I wanted to ask next. Uh, will there be an option to tag PvP flag from the menu? Yes. Uh, yes, you'll be able to. I mean, the, the world of Skull and Bones, I think it's beautiful, right? Um, you know, you choosing a spot to just having a duel with your friend, just turn your flags on and just go there and duke it up. Right. Uh, if people just want to skirmish, uh, just do it. It's uh, that's the playground we created for the community. Um, you know, and you know, over the seasons, we'll start to create more and more tools uh, like this for the players to have fun. You know, and the world's gone. So confirm PVP opt-in is coming. When is it coming? Um, that will come up in the next update. Uh, that's coming out next week, right? Next Tuesday. Yes, yeah. Correct. correct. Uh, Nevin, have you played the PvP opt in? What do you think of it? Yeah, it's cool. I mean, I think, look, at the end of the day, obviously, this game, um, you know, people are asking for PvP. And as mentioned, we want to make sure that PvP is evolving with how the community is evolving. Um, so it's a step in, on our roadmap to uh, ensure that we give people a taste as we get uh, comfortable with PvP uh, in live. Um, we're working on creating PvP game modes, as mentioned. And so. Um, this is going to be great. It allows people to kind of uh, uh, experience uh, a new way of playing the game um, and really test uh, you know, their, their skills against one another. And I think some of the things that we've seen is people kind of creating opportunities to have their own uh, PvP um, you know, sort of uh, battles uh, you know, outside of the normal uh, game rules. And that's exciting. So clearly people want it. Um, it's something we've been working on, and as mentioned, it's part of the roadmap to release it in a in a planned uh, cadence, so that we're evolving the product um, with the community. Yeah, I'm I'm super excited about it. Uh, we had a PlayStation, I think, two weeks ago, and uh, it was a lot of fun to just be able to stay around Saint Anne and PvP with each other. And yeah, I, I'll I let the details for the for the time where we communicate more about how this PvP opt-in feature will work. Uh, but I think it's going to be a, a lot of fun. All right. I'm trying to follow the questions from the chat. There's a lot of mentions of uh, somebody called Lily White. I have mm -hmm. no idea who that person is, why he's so famous. I think it's the moment I mentioned PvP opt-in, everybody going like, Lily White, Lily White. No, no pressure. 
<laughs> um okay let me look at my list of questions oh yeah uh a feature that actually was requested quite early on when we launched the game uh is for people to be able to sell items that they have stashed in their warehouse directly to vendor npcs right uh mac do you want to take this one yeah then an upcoming update like uh we're gonna re enable that option so you can sell directly from a warehouse so basically you interact with the vendor you have access to both your inventory your and your warehouse right yeah and you just cycle through them to sell directly from either that's also something i feel like i've uh taken advantage of because my inventory is filled with commodities mm -hmm. uh and i knew that update was coming so i just decided to wait until that update to make a, a huge profit when that comes okay um we talked about the win oh yeah another one uh so a lot of people are engaged in the in game and and fighting against or hunting down rogues and one of the things that rogues loot a lot is uh silver chests so when you ac start accumulating a lot of silver chests i've seen people with like 10 15 30 hundreds of silver chests yes it can be a bit tedious to open them one by one uh, is that something we're looking to address to make it easier for people to open their chest? Uh, yes. The next update that's coming itself, you can now open multiple uh, silver chests at the same time. So basically one button press, you open all the chests yeah. at once? Yeah. yeah, I see comments in the chat saying that 300 silver chests. <laughs> the chat is going very yeah, fast. Yeah, man. Uh, the themes are, uh, are hard to pick up. Fishing from my light chips by line and pull. Fishing. Are we thinking about fishing? Yeah, I mean, it's something clearly we've talked about, right? There's a, a bunch of what I would call mini games that are on the table and have been looked at and prototyped. Uh, again, it's where are we putting our effort, right? Where are we putting the effort that is uh, where the community is playing? Uh, clearly, we're focusing on ship combat, PvP, uh, end game, and these are the areas that uh, we have we have work to do, right? To create the best uh, the best naval combat game ever. So, um, yeah, these are all things that are on the table, and uh, absolutely they're cool, and we want to get to them. Um, but there's other things that have higher priority based on where we're going. And yeah, I mean, I, I do want to call out, put ec effort into fixing glitches. Like, yeah, absolutely. We've structured our team that there's a subset of the team that all they worry about is quality of life uh, fixes. So as mentioned in Alexa, you can reheat the bug reporter. Um, you know, this is part of running a, a live service title. You gather feedback from the community on features, but also you're tracking bugs. And there's no substitute for a game going live and people hammering on it. Uh, the way that they do. There's no QA that can uh, prepare you for that. That's why we've done our insider programs prior to launch, um, the open betas, the technical tests, et cetera, et cetera. And this allows us to get data that helps us track down issues that you know a normal QA person can't uh, find or a team won't be able to reproduce uh, you know, within a, a certain time frame. So obviously you guys that are watching, like you're the most dedicated uh, people in the community and we need your help, right? We need your help in helping us to fix this and find these issues so that we can get ahead of them. And so, yeah, clearly calling out specifics, that's great. Uh, repro steps, um, videos are amazing. And that's how we typically will be able to deduce what the underlying issue is and roll out fixes as fast as possible. Yeah, I, I can say um, for me, the experience going from Close beta to open beta to launch has been quite uh, yeah, in, intense and a lot of fun because suddenly you have an insane amount of engagement from players in the game, of course, but also on Reddit, on social media. And that's where you see all the things that um, some of them we were already thinking about, but we didn't know if it was something that the community really wanted. Uh, and the amount of things that I was able to bring up to, to you, Mac, or to you, Nevern, and then sit down and look at how can we bring it to the game and implement. Uh, it's been quite uh, quite fun, so that's why I'm really excited about the update coming next week. Because a lot of the things I've things that we brought up to you in the last couple of weeks, mm -hmm. uh, and hopefully the community will appreciate that we've been you know looking at what they're talking about on social media and doing fixes in the game to really fine tune it to uh, what players want. 
I mean, I did see in the chat a lot of stuff asking about like the hand wager and stuff, right? So I, I, I can click that because I think Cutthroat Cargo itself, hand wager, um, the team is working hard to improve on the systems to make it actually a, a PvP activity that works well, right? So something we didn't really talk about is the improvements to Cutthroat Cargo, um, you know, where like, you know, in the next update, you're not going to be able to fast travel. Um, you start off at the same spot, so it's a it's a fair, you know, better ground right off the start. Like whoever runs off with the treasure, like people just give chase, you know, yeah. And uh, that is basically Cutthroat Cargo. And for Hell Major, um, the team is actually aware of how some pirates were actually, um, you know, using the Hell Major to their advantage, and you know, uh, fixes are coming along the way as well. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you for being uh, a fair teammate with all the feedback I've been ringing up to you in the no, in yep. last Just weeks and months. And it. There'll be more. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think, look, at the end of the day, that is, that is the problem space of a live game, right? There's, you know, if I look at this chat in terms of people asking, there's a subset of people asking for the fixes, and there's people that are asking for the new features. Uh, mm -hmm. And all of those have to be weighed against the capacity of the team. Of course, we want to do everything, 100%. We want to do every single thing possible. Um, the goal for us is to be able to release the highest quality game uh, and release content at regular intervals. And obviously, those are the difficult decisions that any development team has to make. Like, does this fix? Uh, how many people does it impact? How critical is it to get this out? Obviously, we want to fix everything, but certain ones are more important than others, and that applies to features as well. Um, is this where the community is playing? Is this uh, going to affect the uh, the greatest amount of people in a, in a positive way? Um, and so these are the discussions that we have on a daily basis with uh, the core team and then the rest of the development team. How are we moving forward, and what is our plan? What is our roadmap, and does it align with how the community is uh, is playing yeah and i see you finally reached uh storm yeah i wanted to sail through the storm and, you know. i have a huge uh, love hate relationship with the storms i think they're beautiful i think they're really immersive and i enjoy sailing through them but fighting in a storm is so difficult because you have to be careful about your opponents targeting you and damaging your ship, obviously, but also every wave that you jump too high will damage your ship. So it's, yeah, it makes every fight a lot more intense and uh, difficult, in my opinion. Yep. I'm I sure a lot of people will disagree and f I think I'm just not good at the game, but. <laughs> I I think the, I think it was the week of the launch. I did a world event. I don't remember which one it was, but I was chasing three elite ships in the middle of the storm and it took me mm -hmm. forever to win. Um, another question we collected from the community, which is more related to cosmetic, uh, and I, s I think I saw a few comments about it on the chat as well. So we see a lot of people are asking about whether we're going to add more cosmetics to the game in the future, uh, which is a relatively easy answer, I guess. But also the possibility to uh, change the way your current armor looks, right? So right now you equip an armor on your ship, um, and it has a distinct look, uh, and you can't change that if you want to keep that armor. Is that something we're considering in the future? Um, we have heard that feedback, right? Um, the team is looking into it. We understand that we have something that you customize called the Hull Color right now. Um, uh, we are definitely looking at options where you can actually choose to actually hide it, but we also wanted to make sure that it's also fair for other players who are actually in combat, right? Like, as we have more PvP activities going on, uh, will that actually cause some players to not be able to know what armor you're wearing? Of course, you can still spy glass and check all these things out. Uh, but those are the things that a team will kind of like prototype to see if it's really an issue and stuff like that. So, yeah. Hope that helps to answer your question. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I talk, uh, I talk to the team uh, working on cosmetic items quite often, and I know they have a lot of creative ideas and mm -hmm. a lot of, yeah, a lot of things they want to add to the game for people to be able to customize their ship, customize their captains, so, and yeah, pets, of course, as well. And in terms of gameplay, if I may add, right, like I think it's more about creating more toys for our player community, right, to customize the ships in terms of gameplay as well, right? Weapons, armors, furnitures, 
uh, will there be updates to other stuff like you know uh, crews? Uh, those are the things that we are also looking at as a team. To yeah, and I feel like I feel like cosmetic is also a great topic for yep. the community to tell us what they like. What do they want their pirate captain to look like in the future? What would they like to equip on their ships? What pets do they would they like to have? Uh, I don't know if you remember, Matt. We had a visit of a few insiders a couple of months to the studio, and they had a couple of interesting ideas. What kind of pets they would like to be added to the game? So I won't spoil anything because it's possible we might be working on some of them. Um, but yeah, there were some good ideas. So, Absolutely. for all of you watching the stream today, don't hesitate to tell us what would be your favorite pet in the future. Do you want to continue having cats and lemurs or any other crazy ideas you'd like us to work on? Somebody says, full body cat costume. <laughs> you want to dress up your captain as a cat? <laughs> no, I guess that's enough. <laughs> all right. Let me see if I have another question. I mean, I've seen questions about what the third person over the shoulder will look like. Uh, definitely, um, it's you know, uh, you'll be able to see your captain, you'll be able to see your pets, you'll be able to see the captain's bill, right? Um, yeah. So, if that helps to answer one of the questions out there. Yeah, and I guess with pets, uh, standing on your ship, there's also different animations that come with pets, right? So that's also something we can look into, like every pet can have a different animation, different kind of little mimics uh, they can do. Um, so depending on which uh, view you pick for your ship, being the first person or, or the over the shoulder camera, when that comes back, you'll be able to look at your pet and what it's doing. Oh, very good question. Uh, I almost forgot. Uh, a lot of people who love to play with rockets find it quite difficult sometimes to see where the aiming reticle is going to go um, and I know the team is working on this the team has a fix for this can you tell us more about it Mike? Uh, yeah well we just make a the spot at which the rockets land actually a bit more obvious like when it's near to you and it's further away um, when the rockets are firing we add the uh, necessary UX animations right to allow um, you know players to actually see it better so uh, that is one of the upcoming fix that we have. Yeah. Cool. So we'll be able to aim properly with the rockets. Uh, I believe so. We test <laughs> it uh, again. You know, uh, to make sure it's, it's working. At least so far, in a lot of the play tests that we have internally, uh, it seems to be working. So. Somebody in the chat is talking about a kraken. So I know we can't talk about a kraken, but. Do we want to talk about sea monsters in general? Do we have any plans for sea monsters? Future plans? Uh, well, I think the answer is yes. I mean, clearly <laughs> sea monsters are part of our uh, part of our formula, right? And uh, they're cool, right? I think it's one of the things that makes this game exciting and interesting. Mac, I'm fighting the ghost ship. Come help me. Uh, okay. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've like tried to talk and uh, focus it on weak points. Um, Okay. Uh, so yeah, I mean, look, I, I think Sea Monsters is, they're cool, right? They're fun to play, they're exciting, and those are the things that we want to invest in. And the team gets really fired up thinking about, um, you know, what are the new things that we can bring to the community? What are the, the stories of Southeast Asia and the legends uh, that we can realize in Sea Monster form? So um, these are absolutely things that are exciting and, um, you know, uh, we can't wait to show you some of the cool stuff that we have cooked up. Um, I did catch sight of like uh, about little boys, right? Awarding only the top eight, right? Um, that's something I I can try to answer as well as, um, we are definitely going to extend, right? Uh, the number of players who are actually going to uh, be rewarded with the Sovereign Vanity set. Um, so it's not going to be just top eight, right? It's going to be at least people who hit Diamond Lakes. So um, that's a piece of information I can share. Yeah, I mean, it goes back to what we were saying earlier that we're very aware of what our players are saying about the current state of leaderboards, yeah. um, and we have a plan to address it. Yeah, and we'll be communicating on this very soon. Yeah. So, are you are actually going to try to take him down? Um, we can try, right? <laughs> now I feel bad because I feel like if I oh, if yeah. I'm asking you questions while you do this. Uh, I mean, we can always run away, <laughs> but I don't <laughs> think so. 
Oh, fine. Fire away. Questions. Let's try. I'm gonna yeah. read. I'm gonna read chat. Listen to you and fight ghost shit. Let's see. What could go wrong? Um, actually, on the topic of manufacturers, uh, and I know it's something we talked about recently, Mac. Um, also, as well, some players saying, "Hey, uh, for example, uh, I f uh, I founded my manufacturer uh, maybe an hour ago. Uh, now I have like 20 minutes left before I have to go to work, oh. yep. and I can't refund manufacturer. So I, it's either I'm late for work, so I can refund before I go to work, or I miss on an entire day of production, basically. Yes, is that so something we're looking to? Yes, um, as I've mentioned before, I do not want any game to actually cause stress for our players. Um, so this is something the team is actually looking into as well. Uh, you know, providing an option for players to actually, uh, well, I, I would call it top topping up the manufacturing. Uh, yeah, you can call it refund manufacturers. Yeah, so, yep. Basically, you, that will be at the cost of uh, whatever is meant. Uh, yeah. Nice. Out of focus. <laughs> uh, absolutely. I think it's gonna take a while. We have like nine minutes left, so I hope you have enough firepower. Um, firepower and accuracy as well. It's amazing what our players actually do. Yeah. They'll be able to take it down. All right. There, there is this one question. Uh, keeps mm -hmm. sliding by. Mm -hmm. Maybe see what else. What else you got, Alexi? So I have, I'm, I'm keeping the last question because um, it's a very interesting question. Uh, it's a question that I'm excited about. Okay. Maybe I'll just ask it now. Uh, so m some players asked us if we have any intention to increase the server cap capacity to have more than 20 players in the future. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's something that uh, I would like us to get to, right? And uh, ultimately, it comes down to performance, right, and gameplay. Um, it's a it's a goal for us to to see how we can create new opportunities um, while maintaining uh, the performance, you know. And I think that's the at a, at, a, at its core in a multiplayer game, you need to ensure that uh, the game is running smoothly, matchmaking, everything works. We have these incredible environments, we have uh, these great looking ships, and so all of that has to be factored into a decision like that in terms of adding more players to the server. Um, and so it is absolutely something that we're looking at, uh, something we want to do, and it's uh, part of the roadmap, and we'll we'll address them as uh, those opportunities come up. Yeah, and I guess um, another question, and again, I'm not sure if we can talk about it too much at the moment, um, but a lot of people are wondering, like, if you look at the map, you clearly see that the top of the map is blanked out with a white area. Is there plans in the future to expand on the map? Uh, is there something there that people should be curious about? Uh, what's the plan with our map? Yeah, well, I, I think, again, as we, we talk about this being a live game and we want to be here for a long time, like, clearly there's an opportunity to expand the map, right? And that needs to be part of our discussion and our roadmap. And so, of course, that's a part of uh, future updates that we're looking at is how to... Uh, bring new opportunities, new places uh, to our players, um, which will in turn tell new stories, create new challenges, new villains, new bosses. Um, and so I think that's that's what's exciting about uh, a game that is a live service game from the ground up, uh, is that we can roll out this content in, in a cadence and we can look at how the players are evolving, how our world is evolving and merge uh, you know those two dynamics uh, together in an exciting way. Um, so. Uh, it's it's something that's definitely in the plans, and we'll uh, we'll be rolling those out as they become more more apparent. Nice. Yeah, obviously some pretty obvious answers in the chat saying it's India, obviously. Um, <laughs> but yes. <laughs> uh, I'll reserve my comments. <laughs> no, but no, uh, I think it's your, what you said is very true. Is that it really depends on what we feel our players want, right? Like uh, the same question as a large ship. Of course, we always had large ships in mind and we always had the intention to add large ships. Of course, if we can, we'll uh, expand the map and, and make the world bigger for players to have new areas to explore. It's really more of a question of what our players want the most and, and then giving them that, right? Okay. Uh, 
I lied. There's actually one last question. It's a bonus question. Uh, it's a question that's been asked regularly for many, many years now by our insiders. When are we adding Hippo Nuggets to the game? Well, um, <laughs> we, we have Hippos, right? We have uh, Hippo Mid, right? So I think yes. Hippo Nuggets uh, is a possible thing, I think. As long as our profanity future allows us to. Right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So the last time we did a stream, I, I, I said that if we do implement Hippo Nuggets as a f uh, consumable food in the game, it needs to give uh some sort of malice for people who use it right because i expect people who use it are like super hardcore players mm -hmm. you have any thought on this mac as a game director you think it's a good idea uh it's definitely something we can look into uh with it think um a little bit about like consumables that actually uh you know make players uh, have an ability to kind of like uh engage content in a different way uh to set your own way about how you want to take on the challenge and stuff like that so um something we can look at okay cool yeah. somebody's asking what's a hippo nugget i guess you need to ask the community about this i i can make my own guesses but i'm not sure i really understand what they they are asking for to be honest so we'll we'll work on it we'll come up with an idea we'll propose it and then hopefully we we understood the request properly uh, I do see a lot of requests for shanties. Uh, obviously, yep, something we're looking at as well, and we'll release them. Uh, obviously, with shanties, there's uh, licensing and all that fun stuff that happens with that. But, uh, you know, we're big fans of the shanties. We want to create new ones. Uh, and I think, um, you know, if you guys have specific uh, shanties that you think are cool and you want to hear in the game, please, like, let's have that discussion. Yeah, and there's also feedback about, um, I want to say the narrative in general, a lot of feedback about the first mates, whether we're going to add new lines for the first mate, whether players will be able to choose a, a different first mate in the future. Is that something we want to talk about? Uh, definitely, I think in terms of lines itself, um, the team is looking at, like, you know, trying to see, like, what can we improve in terms of like the dialogue pool, right? At which the first mate uh, kind of like advises you upon. Uh, we wanted a better kind of like um, rule behind who she really is in terms of experience and everything. Um, and you know, back to the point that I talk about like having other customizables uh, related to the ship itself, right? On top of weapons, armors, furniture, uh, the crew, the first mate, those are the things that uh, the team is also working upon to try to look at, you know, so. All right. Yep. Uh, yeah, I I would just add on top of this is that uh, obviously with each season there's a new antagonist that shows up, so new pieces of uh, lore added to the game, uh, and the opportunity for us to tell more of the Skull and Bones story and add new elements to yeah to the story of the game. So I think with each season you can expect some changes to either the new characters that show up and changes the world. Uh, but also improvements to the current uh, character, like the first mate, or in the future maybe uh, new characters that we can implement. All right, we are running out of time. Uh, I feel like I just want to bring up the the big topic. The well, kind of summarize the big topics of the of the stream for today. The first one is uh, obviously next week. Uh, significant update. I want to say 1.3, which uh, will address a lot of the feedback we've been gathered from the community. A uh, lot of quality of changes. Uh, all of these are based almost entirely on the feedback we've been reading and collecting from social media, from Reddit. Uh, so again, big shout out to the community. Please continue to share your ideas. Please tell us what you like or what you don't like about the game. It's really useful for, all, for us to understand uh, which direction to take and where to bring the game. The other part is obviously uh, with the launch of a new game and the launch of a live game, uh, there's a lot of bugs that are appearing that we could not predict uh, unless we have a mass amount of players with different systems so that's why it's also very important if you can to help us identify those bugs so use the bug reporter um, i'm gonna put it on the screen very briefly once again i uh, never talked about it before but um yeah it's a very useful f tool for us to really identify what are the top priority for the community what are the things we really need to look into um so don't stop basically uh help us understanding 
what you like about the game, what you want us to focus on, what you want us to work on. Uh, and uh, yeah, we have a lot of great stuff coming next week, 1.3, with a future update uh, after that and the season two uh, after that, which I hope will answer a lot of your feedback and bring new and exciting content to everybody. Uh, Nevan, Mac, thank you very much for being on the show. Any last words, any last uh, topic you want to mention? No, I honestly just want to thank uh, everyone who's watching. I mean, look, you guys are the the tip of the spear, right? You're the most dedicated uh, people in the community and maybe some people that are curious about what this game's all about. But uh, as said, like uh, successful live games are games that work with the community to move forward. And you guys are a big part of that discussion. We hear you, we see you, we want to fix all the issues. Um, let's work together to make this a, a great experience and a great place to play. Yeah, okay. thank you. What about you, Mike? Any last words? Um, well, definitely would like to thank the community uh, for getting us to where we are now. Um, I would also say that uh, the team will continue working on improvements on the end game itself. Uh, it's, it's, it's a much deeper system than what the players are seeing uh, now. So those are the things that we'll be continuing working upon. Uh, and, you know, at the same time, bring more, like, you know, variety of activities players can partake in in the world of Skull and Bones. So, thank you. All right. Thank you to both of you. Thank you to everybody who tuned in to watch. Uh, keep an eye out for the patch notes for update 1.3. Uh, PvP coming, lots of quality of changes. Uh, I'm very excited to see what everybody's going to think of it. Uh, and please don't stop sharing feedback, telling us what you think, sharing content about the game as well. Uh, we've seen a lot of cool videos and clips on Reddit, on social media. So, yeah, stay awesome. Thank you very much for tuning in. And we'll speak again very soon. Bye-bye. Thanks, guys. Thank you.